I heard a wise person say, either you run the day or the day runs you. You didn't wake up today to lose, but only you get to choose how this day will go. You woke up today to win. So let's start it off the right way. Our ultimate goal is to be more productive today than we were yesterday. Our ultimate goal is to be more productive tomorrow than we were today. So I need you to mentally get yourself focused. I need you to mentally get yourself locked in. I need you to mentally prepare to go dominate this day. See, if you want to be more productive, you need to become a master of your minutes. You need to become a master of your time and not fall into that state of overwhelm. Oh, I know, because I've been there. And right now, you got a lot of things to do today. But the problem is, it's all in your mind. It's all in your brain. Because how can you hit a target that you can't see? How can you make a basket on a goal that you don't have? We want massive production and not just busy work. Yeah, you know the things that you need to do, but you don't have it mapped out. Your internal GPS is not set. Your internal GPS is not locked in. And that sets you up to not be very productive today. Focus on being productive instead of just busy because you can do a whole lot of stuff in a day and have nothing to show for it. And that means tomorrow you right back at square one wondering where the time went. Step one, step two, step three, step four. I'm doing this at 7.45. I'm doing this at 8.30. I'm doing this at 10.30. I'm doing this at 12.30. That's how you become more productive. By knowing what you need to accomplish and knowing when you need to accomplish it. You don't need more time in your day. You need to decide. You need to make a decision. You need to have a well thought out plan. You're born with a gift. If not that, then you get good at something along the way. And what you're good at, you don't take for granted. You don't betray it. What if you do betray your gift? And you betray yourself. For far too long, you've been holding yourself back. It's just time for you to walk with purpose. It's time for you to walk into your gift. It's time for you to live your best life. We're gonna make mistakes. You gotta own them. Then you gotta make amends. And then you gotta move on. So turn the page, get off the ride. You are the author of the book of your life. Turn that page. The only person you're destined to become is the person you decide to be. When you never made a mistake, it means you never tried. If you never tried, it means you never took a chance. And if you never took a chance, you never believed in yourself, you never had faith. We need faith, you need to believe in yourself. And it doesn't matter how many times you failed. What matters is you keep getting up every day and trying again. And that's what really is important at knowing that. You know, each day you have an opportunity to change. But I want to give you a new word for change. And that word is evolution. And you are either going to evolve or expire. See, everything changes. The economy changes. Relationship changes. We change mentally and emotionally and physically. And you are either dying or you are either living. Life always offers you a second chance. You know what it's called? Tomorrow. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. Your history is not your destiny. You can't get it because you want it. If you put in the work, they can't deny you. If you put in the work, they can't stop you. Don't you realize that you are enough? Don't you realize that you are special? Don't you realize you were put in for a reason? Because you were born to prosper. Be great. 
pursue your own version of happiness. It's wrapped in your capacity, your ability to believe in a dream even if nobody believes in you. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's gonna get a job and somebody born in a hospital that's gonna give them a job. You get to decide which one you're going to win. Cheers to you. No, no, better yet. Here's to the new you. It's a new day. It's a new time. And a new era. Change can be scary. But you know what's scarier? It's when you allow fear to stop you from growing to stop you from evolving. For far too long, regression has been a daily part of your life. And that all stops right now. So cheers to the new you, the improved you, the better you. See, everything you've ever wanted in your life is on the other side of the changes that you will start making today. It's on the other side of the consistent, intentional action that you will start taking today. So your goal is three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, is for you to be able to pat yourself on the back because you know all of the hard work and everything that you put in to be the new version of you. And it all starts with you taking that first step on your trip to your destination of greatness. See, those of you who will evolve, who are willing to evolve, you will inherit the future. Those of you who are willing to take everything you do to the next level, you will inherit the future. It is the individual who is willing to become more. You're trying to get to the point that greatness, it just exudes you. Greatness is in your spirit. When you walk into a room, people feel the greatness that's coming off of you. You radiate greatness. I see change as transformation. I see change as evolution. I see change as beauty, brilliance. I see change as the future. I see change as necessary. I see that if I don't change, there is a generation of people who are gonna be stuck in the same place. Change is inevitable. You are either changing for the worse, or changing for the better. You decide. It's time for you to go from the downtrodden to next level living. You will die to the old you and you will resurrect the new you, the improved you, the better you, the person you were born to be, the person you were meant to be, and the person you want to be. So I need you to release the unchangeable past and embrace your phenomenal future. The lie, somebody lied to you and told you that it was impossible. Every time somebody told me I could not do something, I had a decision that I had to make in order to achieve what they said was impossible. Because greatness lives in you. It's just time for you to let the world see it. It's time for you to let yourself see it. It's time for you to believe it. The next level awaits. But the next level will require you to die to the old you and metamorph into the new you. The well on their way to the best you. People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. How do you even do these speeches? It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either gonna work for it. You gonna sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. You're blessed enough to make it to tomorrow and you hear my voice today if you're still breathing you still have an opportunity to be achieving 
calling all reformers. I'm calling all innovators. I'm calling all game changers. I'm calling all world shakers. I'm calling all city shifters. I'm calling everybody that has an inkling of faith in themselves. I'm calling everybody. You will inherit the future. What I've been trying to tell you all year when I said, you gotta want it as bad as you wanna breathe. Listen to him, you gotta hear what I'm saying. First, what I'm trying to tell you is, you gotta have a desire. Like for real, the first thing you gotta have, if you wanna be what you wanna be, have what you wanna have, do what you wanna do, man, you gotta have that desire. You gotta have a hunger, listen to me. It don't come from without, it comes from within. Only you know what you want. Listen to me. Only you know what you are capable of doing. Oh, only you know what you dream about. Only you know what the next level is for you. So number one, you gotta hear it all year. I've been trying to get this one message across all year. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. That's gotta be a desire. That's gotta be something within you that burns. Hunger is your internal security guard. And as long as hunger is there, it keeps out intruders. Hunger opens your eyes. Hunger is your driver. Hunger drives improvement. Hunger. You gotta get hungry if you want future. You gotta get hungry if you want destiny. You gotta get hungry if you want connections. You gotta get hungry if you wanna live that higher quality of life. You gotta get hungry, 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 hungry. And only the ones that want it will be the ones that will succeed. It is going to hurt you, but it will push you. It is going to put you in a position where you want to break down and quit. But we all know that quitting is not an option. If you feel in your heart that you deserve this opportunity, then let it resonate through your veins. Let it flow through your soul. Understand that it takes pure grit, tenacity, passion, and pure focus. This is what you train for. Hours and hours and hours and hours of pain. Hours and hours and hours and hours of sweat. Hours and hours and hours of working hard. Do you give up now? Do you start doubting yourself? What are you afraid of? And my dream will eventually become my reality if I stay hungry. If you want your future, if you want to fulfill your destiny, then you have to stay hungry. The problem with you is you got satisfied. You got satisfied with what you accomplished. You got satisfied with what you did in the past. If you want your future, then you are going to have to get acquainted with pain, with discomfort, with inconvenience. Because hunger is the only thing that's going to give you the power to persevere through that pain. Never stop climbing the hill. There is always another hill to climb. Go find your hill and climb. Are you afraid of the man or the woman next to you? Do you feel that they worked harder than you? Do you feel they deserve what you have worked so hard for within yourself? Make no mistake. Don't sleep on your greatness. Don't sleep on those that want to take away what's yours. Just understand this. Doubt, fear, and those that are trying to pull you down won't get you across that finish line. Understand that you got to be the one that wanted the most. If you got up this morning, when you are running your race, then be committed to your race. Do not be committed to excuses. Do not be committed to fear. Do not be committed to those that may oppose you. Be committed to crossing that finish line. Be committed to being a champion. Be committed to being a warrior. Be committed to keeping your eyes focused on the prize. 
You don't have any limitations. You don't have any boundaries. Your past is your past. And I told you before, you want to go talk about the past? I could go pound for pound with you. I was a high school dropout. You want to talk about the past? We can talk about the past, but my past ain't got nothing to do with my present. This is the only opportunity I got, and I got to lose myself. Every single day, I got to lose myself in this moment. When you are hungry, you are creative. When you are hungry, you are innovative. When you are hungry, when you are no longer full, when you are no longer satisfied with where you are and you raise your standards, it is only then that you can have your future. If you can stay hungry, you can get the resources. If you can stay hungry, you can get the strategy. If you can stay hungry, the ideas gonna come. If you can stay hungry, the connections will be aligned. If you can stay hungry, the problem with many of you is that you got full, you got complacent, you got lazy. Somewhere along the line, you lost your enthusiasm, your optimism. You lost your hunger. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. I have too much to accomplish to be satisfied with where I am right now. I have too much on the line. I have too many people depending on me to win. I must stay hungry. You have what it takes mentally. You have what it takes physically. You got the heart. You got everything it takes to make it happen. So you got to stop waiting for circumstances. You got to stop waiting for situations, man. You got to catch this last one. Don't quit on you. Don't quit on this opportunity. Don't quit on your success. Don't quit on being the best of yourself. Reading is the strongest signal for success in the future that I've ever seen. It is the strongest, strongest, strongest. I got my first job in radio when I was 16 years old because I was a great reader. Have That's you ever met a person for. who was a great reader when they were young who was not successful? You never, never. It is the absolute best foundation ever in life. I was always sort of really uh, interested in reading when I was a kid, um, and I read a a everything that I could get my hands on. I read the encyclopedia, I read At every what age? Um, age nine or ten. Okay. Um, I, I, well, not that I actually wanted to read the encyclopedia, but I ran out of things to read, so in desperation I read the encyclopedia. There's a reason why we have the technology that we do, at least in part because fans of science fiction have been influenced by those ideas and have taken those ideas and put them into practice in the world. That which we focus our imaginations on, Tom, is what we manifest in this realm. That's the secret. That's the deal. The thing about a book that you can't get from a discussion is that a book is, a book is like a portrait as opposed to a photograph. You know, a photograph, it's click, that's that. A, a, a portrait you layer on and layer on and layer on and work over on for weeks. You still have the same single image, but there's this depth to it. And a book enables you to think and then rethink and think and then rethink. And so, you can go deeper in a book than you can, I would say, in any other medium. The power of science fiction literature and its connection to the what if is it actually inspires us. It invites us to create the world as a reflection of, of what we can imagine. So, given the truth that you never have control, you never had it, how can you eliminate stress and cultivate resilience? Well, I want to share some concepts with you. Concept number one is mental chatter, which is the internal monologue that you have going on in your head all the time. It begins when you get up in the morning, is with you right through the day, is with you now. But in the short time I've been speaking, how many of you have already gone someplace else? What am I going to have for lunch? Who do I have to call? Right? I rest my case. 
All of that is mental chatter and I invite you to think of it. Whatever situation you are in, your mental chatter about that situation makes it an order of magnitude worse. Then we have mental models and a mental model is a notion you have that this is the way the world works. But this is not the way the world works, it's your model of this is the way the world works. And the more you believe in your model of this is the way the world works, the more evidence you seem to get that this in fact is the way the world works. And very soon you built a silo around yourself that's so thick you can't break out of it. Your mental chatter, the mental chatter that you entertain and the mental models that you hold dictate your life. You're all living in a matrix. If any of you have seen the movie, the original Matrix, we're all living in a matrix. The only difference is this was not constructed by an alien civilization out to get you. You constructed it with your mental models and your mental chatter. But the more important point is it really doesn't matter. You have the choice of determining what is the emotional domain you occupy. In all likelihood, you did not even recognize that you had a choice and you exercised that choice. But now that I'm pointing it out to you explicitly, do you recognize that? You had a choice and you chose to exercise that choice and you never even recognized that you actually exercised a choice. The reason you exercise the choice you did is because of the mental chatter you entertain and the mental models you hold. That's how important these constructs are. I will go further. Every time you have a situation in your life that you find unpleasant and it persists, not some of the time, not most of the time, every time, you have a situation in your life you find it unpleasant and it persists, you are using one or more mental models that are not serving you well. And when you start making changes in those mental models, you'll be astonished how quickly the situation will resolve itself. We spend too much of our emotional energy on the two, three or four things that we think are wrong in our lives and we entirely ignore the 30, 40, 50, 200 things which are pretty darn good in our lives. We have an unfortunate habit of sticking labels on things. Any event that happens in our head, we immediately decide this is good or this is bad. It does a tremendous amount of damage to us. Can you think of anything that happened in your life that at the time it happened, you thought this is terrible? But you can now look back upon it and say, gee, that was actually pretty good. So if something happened to you in the past that at the time it happened, you thought was terrible, but you can now look back and say it was actually pretty good, why are you in a hurry to label anything that happens now bad? Is there any possible way in which in X years it could turn out to be pretty good. Just pausing to consider that question will take you to a different emotional domain. And if you then take the next step and say, is there anything I can do to make that happen? You move into a realm of possibility and courses of action will open up to you that you never would have considered before. How do I figure out my purpose in life? You start by asking the question, why am I here? I'm not talking about in the office or in that organization or in that country, but here on the planet. And, and that's the only way there is to start. It may be an incomplete answer, maybe a half-baked uh, answer, but that is much superior to, I don't know and I don't want to question it. You know, uh, it's often attributed to Mark Twain, the quote, that the two, two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you discover why you're here. What differentiates the best leader? And it has something to do with this spirit, passion, for something they hold deeply at, and consciously at bay. 
who they are and why are they in the world becomes very important to them. And they're able to bring out uh, those characteristics in others, that consciousness in others. They don't do it by cajoling or by, by manipulation. Uh, that can be done. It can be done for a short term. Uh, but it's not a long-term measure. But they actually help people in the discovery, if they're not already awake to who they are, they help them become awake to why they're in this business or organization. And together, that they start to move ag aggressively towards a vision. That's what differentiates teams, and that's what where work spirit comes into play, that spirit of purpose. And it, it's enunciated, they know what it is, and they speak directly to it. There's power in knowing who you are. There's not much power in being a zombie and just walking through the world and saying, well, a lot of people do it and it's, they do stuff and they say, I don't think that's it. Well, what do you think it is? People that get down and, and out about the organization or wherever they find themselves in a family. So not being snippet with it, but why do you stay? And really looking for the answer and then following that answer up. And what would happen if you left? What ha would happen if you stayed? What would happen if you changed? It's up to them to pull themselves out of the victimhood. It's hard to see from a victim standpoint, the aspect that everything's a choice. And I move ahead with everything's a choice. Existentialism, that it is a choice. And how you feel about it and what you do about it. Does it mean there aren't barriers around you? Does it mean the world doesn't want to guide you to a certain end point? But you are in the driver's seat of your life. And so what does it mean? After a lifetime of working with groups at the highest level of leadership and strategy, what would you have wanted to teach yourself as a 20-year-old, Stephen? Things I would tell a 20-year-old, uh, be appreciative that you've learned how to manage yourself, then move towards leading yourself. And, and leading yourself is understanding and starting to do the deep inquiry that you'll do for life. Why am I here on earth? For what purpose? And then to establish a vision. Where do I want to be? Where do I, what do I want to be doing? Being with, learned. And then what values do I want to operate within? So it's really de de developing that, that vision, value, and uh, purpose for myself. And then once I have that, then I'd say the, the last step is start to identify people that I align with on purpose at different levels and start to move with them into the world. If you took a leaders in the past, that would be sub, uh, a lion leader would be something like a MacArthur in the Pacific, General MacArthur. It's all about me. Most people can't ma name a general that was under MacArthur's uh, command. But if you go to Eisenhower, in World War II in the, uh, in the West, we know about Bradley, we know about Patton, we know about a bunch of them. Why? Because he was a leader of a wild dog pack, drawing together both the Brits and the Americans, all these different personalities to do what? A single focus, defeat Nazism. Wild dogs are unique. That issue of we have a shared vision and the vision it, I don't trump the vision. It's not about me. It's about what we have set our collective mind to. And I'll do anything as your leader to make that happen with you. And perseverance, tenacity, I refuse to give up. Because it, it, it really isn't, there's not another option. If it does, it's not another, this is what I've chosen. Why do I give up my life purpose? I just don't go to Walmart and shop for another one. This is what I'm here for. So do or die. And it's not a gloomy thing. I'm just going to make it happen. Oftentimes people go, okay, here's really what I want to do. And this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then they see all these other things that other people are doing. And then they, they kind of see that as like a grab bag. And they're like, and I want a little of this and a little of this and a little of this. And I want it all at the same time. And that's not really possible, you know? You can't play five sports at the same time. You gotta pick one, you gotta specialize. Maybe you can do two, but you probably can't do five, right? You can't be a classical musician and a rock star, you know, and this and this all at the same time. So it's about sort of picking your lane. And then knowing that some, some goals are mutually exclusive. 
Uncertainty is scary. New information is scary. Change is scary. And everyone has a different way of handling that. I will pivot when necessary. I'm like, oh, no, uh, dead end, woo! Right, you know, do what you gotta do. And I will, I, I can take new information and adjust the plan immediately and have no qualms about it and just move, move, move. And the way to balance that is that outside of work, I really like things to be stable. You need to have that pole that you can go back to when everything looks crazy that you can reach out to, to hold on to. And if I didn't have that, I think I'd be much more afraid of chaos. And when someone actually asks and, and kind of owns that, like when they say, do I want to make an impact? And the answer is yes, and they own it. They realize they're going to have to develop. They can no longer leave their growth to, medi you know, to, to, to randomness, because if they do, they'll always be mediocre. And they realize, I got to become something entirely above both of those. That's what most people don't see. They're like, it, it's, we've made this binary false conversation, right? It, it's, a, it, it's, it's not a true sort of choice here. It's a false dichotomy, we call it, right? It's not strengths or weaknesses. Many of you, if you have a big dream, a huge goal, you gotta become something entirely above and beyond any strengths you even know about, feel or own, and go way beyond any weaknesses you've ever even addressed or even you know about, because you're gonna discover so many new strengths and so many new weaknesses on the path that it's almost irrelevant what they are now. It's what's the goal and build into that. What am I good at? What do I love? What does the world need? And how do I get paid for it? To me, those four help you unlock your passion. When you find the intersect across all of those four, you're making your passion your purpose. You'll unlock your passion, you'll find your purpose. This is path one, there's two paths. Path one, I find my skill set and I engage it to help other people and become better at it. So I'm becoming better at what I'm good at and I'm using it to help other people because I'm aware of what I'm quite good at and I know what, what knowledge I have, what skills I have. I have some self-awareness. The other path that people often miss is actually I just start serving people. I just start helping people and I start to notice what I enjoy about that and what I'm good at helping people with. So that's Gandhi's part. Gandhi said that you find yourself when you lose yourself in the service of others. So for me, those are the two paths of how do I find my passion and finding the intersect between those four areas. The question I ask clients the most, what does success look like for you on this project? And I get them to really describe it to me. Let's say there's more than one thing in there. I go, now if you could only pick one of those things and the other ones didn't happen, which one would you pick? And I'm trying to get them to sift through some of that conflict so we can really hone in on what we're trying to do. And oftentimes, I, I, where ego comes in is like, we've got the things that impress other people and then the real meaningful impact that we're trying to have. And oftentimes, I'm not saying that the, the status things aren't nice and they're not, they, they're not impressive and they're not cool, but we've got to make sure that they're not coming at the expense of those other things. So motivation is a word, right? It's, it's, a, it's a label that we put a set of events in our brain. Uh, what you actually want is the outcome of that. You want to do things that when, you, when it's hard. So I think that there are a few kind of things that, that we know work. One is uh, evidence of past successes. If I sit with you and I go back to your memories and I reframe them as successes, suddenly, they, suddenly the current event that's the same is a success. So I think that one, one thing is like having success stories and identification stories. As in you find there's a lot of people out there there was a person that is like you, that had similar experience and chose the thing that you want to choose. Find this person or these people and it's going to rub into you. So I, I get asked by my students often, how do I become funnier? How do I become uh, smarter? And, and like my one tip that I give them all the time is surround yourself by people that you want to be like. The first thing is you must put your personal growth first, okay? So you must take your meditation practice, your personal growth, your reading, your gym. That must come number one. It must be more important than your business. And you got to spend around an hour a day. Now, if you can't, half an hour a day works, but you got to spend at least half an hour a day dedicating yourself to exercise, meditation, spiritual growth. As you grow, your business will grow. Now, this advice doesn't come from me. This advice comes from Sri Kumar Rao, the, the, the great MBA professor um, at Kellogg and London Business School. And he says the biggest thing that MBA students are not being taught 
is that their life shouldn't be about their business. Rather, their life should be about their personal growth. Their business is nothing more than the greatest vehicle for that growth. Your business, in short, is like a gym. It teaches you leadership. It teaches you perseverance. It teaches you stress resilience. It teaches you how to plan. But it is not you. You are you. Your personal growth is what should be number one. Your business is just a vehicle. Rao says, if your business gets to a billion dollars, it doesn't matter. The question is, did you grow? If your business fails, it doesn't matter. The question is, did you grow? Now, when you take that attitude, you become far more successful as an entrepreneur, far more successful、uh, in business. I cannot tell you the number of businesses I've had that have failed. I shared one, the early version of Instagram, that was so painful, but I learned from it, and it gave me the wisdom to go on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And so, when you focus on your personal growth. What happens is that even if a business fails, even if an idea fails, you emerge from it with new knowledge, new data points, new a new version of yourself that can do better on the next idea or the next business. That's rule number one.、So、the second rule is is a rule called unity. It means see yourself as as a part of a larger whole, of a larger human species.、Uh, do not cheat. Do not manipulate. Go into any rela- all relationships with a win-win attitude. Never take advantage of people. Create products that deliver true value and are not just sold by by salesiness. So the unity rule is a key driving force in how I operate everything in my life. I have I have no enemies. I have no ill will towards anyone, and I practice forgiveness every single day. I forgive every. Person, everything, everyone that has wronged me. Forgiveness is actually a superpower. Studies have shown that when you practice radical forgiveness, your life seems to get luckier. Your health improves. Your peace of mind goes up. Your sleep gets better. And so, the unity rule is a key piece of that. It is the idea that unity is one of the most powerful value systems、uh, anyone can have. It's. We've almost gone bankrupt like at least three times. But these type of moments, they 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 are soul crushing. They 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 keep you up at night. But you gotta you gotta be prepared to go through them on your journey. But again, if you adopt the attitude that the number one thing is your growth, is how much you're learning, you're better able to go through these ups and these downs. Like the ups don't go to your head. And the downs don't destroy you. Well, so okay. So firstly, the word entrepreneur is a bull term, right? It's one of the most overused nonsense terms out there. I can teach anybody to become an entrepreneur in two minutes flat. All you got to do is go to Fiverr.com, open an account, and offer to make videos or images for someone. Boom, you're self-employed. You're an entrepreneur. It's a bull term. You have that. And then you have at the end of the spectrum probably the greatest living entrepreneur today, Elon Musk. But the spectrum is so wide; it's it, it's a bad definition. So there are other definitions that you got to look at, right? You got to look at: Are you working in a job where you can earn the money you need to live the life you want while being fulfilled and happy doing the work you do? I think that is the definition. You don't have to be an entrepreneur for that. Many of the people creating the biggest changes in the world are not entrepreneurs. Think about the engineers at NASA. Think about the people who are inventing、uh, new technologies. Think about the people who、um, come come up with new with with new medicines that are changing lives. Many of these people are working for companies, but they are paid well. They love their jobs. They're making a contribution to humanity, and it is enough if you're that. This bullshit idea that you got to be、um, working for yourself. Is so outdated. Rather, you got to look at three things. Number one, can I exercise what I'm really good at doing? Number two, do I love what I'm doing? Number three, am I making money doing this? It is a decision. It's something that you have to decide, and whatever it is that you decide, you're going to end up seeing the evidence for that. So you have to be really careful whether you decide that life is difficult. It's this slew of things that's coming at you that's trying to break you, and nothing ever good happens to you. Or if you choose to believe, no matter what happens to you, you can always choose your response. You can always choose to believe that it's happening for you and not to you. And in that perspective, in having that mindset, then you're going to begin to look 
for the solutions. You're going to look for the ways out. You're going to look for the lesson that you can learn in the hardship. That is mindset. It's a subset of beliefs about what you're capable of and what the world really is at its foundation, whether it's working for you or against you. So understand that these things are all a choice. He had me write my vision for health, wealth, relationships, career, business, finances, charity, fun, experiences, everything, every area of my life. He had these documents. He said, I want you to read them every day and you're gonna do it while you come into the office so that I know that you've done them. And I want, to, I want you to run your fingers across them as you're reading them. And then when you're finished one paragraph, close your eyes and I want you to feel, what would it be like if that was true? So he got me to see it, to touch it, to close my eyes and visualize it and to feel it. So at the time he didn't understand what he was really doing, but he was causing me to create new neural patterns in my brain that did not exist before. Let me promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. Too often people look at me as the after picture and they don't realize just how much I had to crawl through, including low self-esteem, massive insecurities, crippling anxiety, having, I, at one point, I couldn't even tell a story in front of five people in my own family because my voice was shaking. I was so freaked the fuck out. And right now I'm around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah! Looks like we have about seven people in this room. I routinely speak in front of massive crowds and all of that was a process. It is a process that is teachable. It is things that you can go through to completely and radically change your mindset. And in changing your mindset, you change the wiring of your brain. And that's what I want you guys to understand. You can change the physical structures and the functions of your mind. If you think and you believe and you emotionalize, you visualize uh, and you create your plan for how am I actually going to achieve this? So what do I need to do? When am I going to do it? How specifically? How am I going to uh, tweak it, measure it, and iterate it so that I'm consistently making progress? I learned the value of progress versus perfection. None of my mentors ever had me focus on perfection. They had me focus on progress to just keep getting better. Little incremental gains every day, every week, every month, every quarter. And even when you move backwards a couple of steps, what's the progress that you made and what you learned? So I was taught that failure is an opportunity to learn. And I was also taught to disassociate me being a failure from failing. This was a big breakthrough moment for me when I really began to research the brain and came across the whole notion of brain plasticity. When I was growing up, people actually debated whether or not an old dog could learn new tricks. And people said that you're born with a certain number of brain cells and that's it. And hey, every time you go out and party, you're just diminishing your brain cells and you die with far fewer than you began with. And now science has proven that absolutely is not true. And being able to imagine that process, I think will really help you guys. Um, People also hold the mistaken belief that only kids are able to learn, that you know, up until say 11, 12, or 13, you know, it's easy to learn, and people often cite languages, and after that, it gets a lot harder, but again, that just isn't true, it doesn't match the brain science, it just, as a lifestyle, we don't often put ourselves through the paces that kids are going through, and that doesn't mean the kids don't have an easier time, they do, but it is certainly something that you can do to a profound extent as you get older, but thinking that you can't is really gonna hold you back. Initially, it's hard, and you have to use conscious effort to create the new beliefs. He says, but over 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, that new pattern that you're focusing on and paying attention to, your brain basically says, well, I guess you really don't need those old patterns. You keep activating these new ones. Let's just make these ones work, and let's make these real. The very meaning of life is to see how many skills you can acquire that have utility and then put those skills to use in the service of something bigger than yourself. But the only way that you're going to be able to do that is to build into the core of your being the ability to endure. Life is hard. Life is going to kick you in the face. There are going to be a thousand times in your life when you're going to want to give up. And the only thing that is going to see you through, the only thing that's going to make sure that you actually endure is your mindset. 
And if you get that right, if you lay the foundation for that, if you put all the pieces in place, then you're going to persevere. Then you're going to push through. Then you're going to be able to see things through to the end. But if you don't do that, then you're going to break. And that's what I see happen to so many people. And that's where my own life started, was not believing in myself. And that is one of the most important things for you to understand is that your mindset is one of the most important feeders into your perspective and perspective is everything. I do find myself basically every day having to constantly reorient myself back to the goal, back to the goal. If you're a learner, you're a learner and in learning, you'll be able to actually achieve your goals. So make sure you're obsessed with that. We all have a story. We have a money story, a relationship story, a health story. A, we have a story for everything. And then that story keeps recreating our lives over and over and over again. And we have beliefs that support the story. We have habits that support the story. We have people that support the story. We have systems that support our story. And so my question that I always ask people, who would you be with a different story? How many people believe that we could go beyond what we believe that we could go beyond? And I think really the key to that, one of the most obvious ways of doing that is reading. Um, I really feel like it's one of the most valuable skills to master today. It's, it's something where you're, if somebody has decades of experience in anything and they put it into a book and you could read it in a day or two or three or four, you could download decades into days. I think it's the ultimate advantage there is. And um, in, in Game of Thrones, there's, there's this quote saying that a reader lives a thousand lives. A person who does not read lives only one. First obstacle to effective reading is lack of education. It's not a skill that we were taught, right? You're not born with the ability to read. And the last time you took a reading class, how old were you? Six. So has the, has the velocity, has the variety, has, has the demand increased a little bit since you were six? But we're still reading like we're a six-year-old. Does that make sense? And so you want to upgrade those kind of skills. Second obstacle to effective reading is lack of focus. Lack of focus. How many of you, when you read, your mind wanders and you can't concentrate? One of the reasons why is you're reading too slow. And this is a big rumor being spread around, I think, by slow readers. But if I, if I ask you to read faster, what do you think will happen to your re reading understanding comprehension? You feel like it'll go down. In actuality, it goes up. Like, we have online program in 100, 180 country students, so we have a lot of data. Fastest readers tend to have the best comprehension because they have the best focus. Because your brain is a supercomputer, but when most people read, they feed this supercomputer one, word at a uh, time. Metaphorically, notice the feeling that you have, the sensation you feel when I talk slowly. You're like, you know, you're like, and in your mind, after over time, will start wandering, you'll be distracted, you start falling asleep, you start doing other things. Isn't that what you're doing already when you're reading? You're reading too slow. Just like when I talk too slow, your mind goes everywhere. That's the reason why. And so when you go faster, it's like driving a car faster. If you go driving slow, you know, you're drinking your tea, you're texting, doing your makeup, you're, you're, you're doing all these different things. But if you're racing a car, you're just doing one thing. You're just driving, right? And that's why when you read faster, you have better focus. And what, because you have better focus, you have better comprehension. The last reason I would say that we got to fix for your, your reading speed is this thing called subvocalization. What, what's subvocalization, real quick? The inner talk. How many of you notice when you read something, you hear an inner voice, this voice inside your head, reading along with you? Hopefully it's your own voice, not like somebody else's voice. The reason why it's a challenge is if you have to say all the words to understand them, you can only read as fast as you could speak. And you don't have to say New York City or Statue of Liberty or, you know, or even if it's an abbreviation, NYC, you don't have to say that in order to understand what it is any more than you would say like a stop sign. 95% of the words you've seen, you don't have to pronounce. That's why, how many of you listen to audiobooks and, and podcasts at higher speeds? Because you can understand it just fine, right? You just can't talk that fast. And so that's why it's a limitation when you're reading. Now, the last thing is this, is just keep a reading list. 
keep a list of like targeted books as you hear all the time. Keep it in your phone because I have like this. Everybody has a to-do list, but I have like a to, I have a really long to-learn list, and this is my like to-read list. And that's the thing: one book could change your life forever. When I first taught this, one of those my first students, she read 30 books in 30 days. I mean, can you imagine the books you would read? Not skimming or scanning or getting the gist of it. Not just because you can understand. Like, I don't want you to skip it and not understand it. Like, my clients are like, you know,、uh, they're they're financial advisors, they're attorneys, they're healers, they're they're medical doctors. You don't want your doctor to get the gist of what she's reading, <laughs> right? So you want them to focus. So what I would say with this is, like, she read this. I want to find out not how. I know exactly how, because the skills are simple, guys. I want to know why. And I found out her mother was dying of terminal cancer. And the book she was reading, the book to save her mom's life, because she was only given two day, two months to live by doctors. And they're book reading books that you read, books on wellness, energy medicine, alternative medicine, health, diet. And I was like, good luck, you know. I said prayers. Six months later, I get a call from this young lady, and she's crying and crying, crying. Finally, when she stops, I find out they're tears of joy, that her mother not only survived, but is really starting to get better. Doctors don't know how, they don't know why. They called it a miracle. But her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from her daughter, who learned it from all these books. And I realized at that moment that me, as a broken child who couldn't read for years and years, I realized that would be my mission. That knowledge, if knowledge is power, then learning and especially reading is your superpower. Procrastination usually comes from several factors. Feeling anxious about the task, insecurity about your ability to complete the task, or thinking there's a lot of time to get the task done, even if there isn't. Not only is procrastination a common problem, but it leads to more stress and can affect the academic performance of students to a devastating degree. According to a study by Study Mode Student Psyche Report, distraction was found to be the most common reason for procrastination. This is followed by feeling overwhelmed. And unable to decide where to start. Not only does procrastination affect students' grades, but it can also be detrimental to their physical and mental health. The importance of investing in resources to make sure affordable health care and access to mental health facilities is higher than ever. If you or someone you know finds that procrastination is taking over your life, talk to your local health care provider on steps you can take. It is important to know that your mental health and well-being is important, and that by taking care of yourself, you can take on the world one task at a time. Ultimately, your daily actions determine what your goals are. It's up to you to make sure your actions and goals know what their roles are. Meaning, you must self-assess. Look in that mirror and confess that you are not giving one thousand percent. You are not putting every ounce of your heart and soul into it. Now let's fix this. Your teacher or professor assigns the work. Your teacher or professor schedules the test. It's up to you to manage your study time so you can put your best foot forward. So when you're playing video games, when you're shopping at the mall, when you're surfing the internet at your leisure, when you're out with your friends grabbing a pizza. When you're browsing social media for hours, hoping your likes are doubling, or doing a host of other things that don't involve studying or completing an assignment, that's what I mean when I say your actions and your goals are not in alignment. Because you wrote down graduate, so replace the wasted time with study, and watch how quick you become an excellent tester. Your academic stock will soar like an eagle when you become an intellectual time investor. You want to know why you feel the way you feel? You feel stuck. You feel like you can't get anything done in a day because you have not made the decision to sit down and prioritize it. The great Stephen Covey says, "The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities." See the way to get started. Is to stop talking and start doing. Those that achieve at a high level, they don't talk about it; they be about it. I love when T.D. Jake says, "Don't tell me what you gon' do. Tell me you got it done." 
If you want to be more productive, then I need you to start doing things that the most productive people on this planet do. And if you don't know what those things are, sounds to me like you need to get yourself a mentor because there's someone you know in this life that you say, man, he or she is on top of it. How can they continuously get so much done in a day? Why are they winning? And I feel like I'm losing. You need to study that person. And if you know them personally, go set up a meeting and have a conversation with them and ask them for any tips, tricks, or hacks that they can give you to help you become more productive. Ask them if they'll take you under their wing and hold you accountable for doing things on a daily basis that puts you in a productive light. And I'm sure they will tell you, focus on being productive instead of just being busy. See, that's why you get yourself in trouble because you think you're making good use of your time. And then at the end of the day, you look up and realize you've got nothing done at all. I'm sure that mentor would tell you, make sure each and everything you do has a measurable outcome. Because if you don't know what the outcome is, how can you achieve it? If you can't say I got 10% done, 20% done, 50% done, 75% done, how you gonna know when you're finished? See, effective performance is preceded by painstaking preparation. And the number one problem for those that are less productive is they simply fail to prepare. They simply fail to plan. They simply lack discipline. As a matter of fact, Abraham Lincoln said, discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. And you keep telling the world that you want greatness. You keep telling the world that you want to achieve at a high level. But your actions, <laughs> your actions are painting a totally different picture. Your actions are saying something else. So you get out of this life exactly what you put into it. How you gonna get money out of your bank account and you ain't put no money in? How you gonna get production out of a day that you did everything opposite of what production really is? If you're like most people, it's painful to sit down and try to put together a plan. It's painful to sit down and try to think about A, B, C, D and make it all linear. You just wanna get up and go, go, go. But at the end of the day, you have nothing to show, show, show. See, champions, they focus on the productivity. They focus on the production. Because without production, there is a massive reduction, not only in their pay, but in their spirit, in their will. So you have to associate more pain with not being productive than the pain you associate with sitting your butt down and taking the time to come up with a strategic plan that will lead you on the road to riches, that will lead you on the road to success, that will lead you on the road to greatness, that will lead you on the road to massive productivity. It's simple math. You plus production equals next level greatness. I love this quote. It says, growth and productivity, however it occurs, has a disruptive side to it in the short term. Most things that contribute to growth and productivity are very, very painful but anything worth having is going to be disruptive to your life. Anything worth having is going to cause some discomfort. You know the motto. If it doesn't shake you up a little bit, if it doesn't make you uncomfortable, then nine times out of 10, it won't get results. I want you to fast forward. The things you do now are going to directly affect 
the outcome you achieve later. But think about something that you didn't want to do in the past and you did it anyway. Remember how you felt, how you felt that sense of pride, how you were so proud of yourself, how you were so glad you simply got started. Feels good to get some stuff done, don't it? That's exactly how you're going to feel at the end of the day when you've turned your productivity meter up to 10 and you've effectively put yourself in a position to win again and again and again. So be more productive. Have one productive day and let that turn into two and then let that turn into three and let that turn into four and that turns into a week of production and that turns into a month of production and that month turns into a year of production and before you know it, you are naturally productive each and every day of your life. And now, when you have a day that you are less productive, you feel it and you do everything within your power to make sure the next day it doesn't happen again because now, being productive is a part of who you are. And you truly understand that to arrive at your destination, the next level, it requires massive productivity each and every day of your life. This is a great day.